for the pistol round with the P250 smoke and flash for Breezy. Rox and Kevlar for everybody else. No raid boss in for the T side. Diffuse double flash for Nexa with the standard pistols, USPs, and Kevlar across the entire G2 board. And a 3 2 split in favoring long, which is exactly where EG want to go as well. Kenny S is hunting for that opening kill. Hungry to take Tarek out of the play. And he does draw first blood, tapping up to the second head with Nexa taking Ethan as well. That's a 5v2 game immediately. Oh, <laughs> even swings in for another one. Gets that 3k. Nico gets involved. I don't even think Evil Genius has had a chance to take a firefight. So many great shots coming through from G2. And it looked like for a moment they may have been caught in repositioning, getting aggressive. But no, between Nexa, Nico, and Kenny S, they shut that pistol round out of the world. What a start coming through for the international squad. And let that define the pace going forward for this team. If they just continue playing out of their confidence, uh, out of confidence like that, then we're going to have a very, very, very different map up here. Smokes up, scouts in the circle, tapping through down the uh, mid posi position, hoping to get something out of the mid doors. Hunter with the SMG, Amanek. Get some sort of HE on towards the T side line, we'll be able to do so. So at least EG get away with that much on this force play round. The Eagles, P250s, and CZs in, of course, alongside the scout is Cirque. It's a lot of mid presence here from EG, and none from G2 really wants to challenge it here. Yeah, straight up force by coming through for EG. They want to try and see if they can put the pressure back on their opposition. A lot of utility for them to work with. They've already gained this sort of Xbox short control without really having to use any of the flash over the top. Gets at least a few of the players quite aggressive, but it's going to be a peek out from mid. And he will shut down that first player in that mid position. Hunter comes up with an SMG kill on Cirque. Breezy tagged low. Hunter leaning in first, Duck gets the headshot on towards one man. It will be Ethan there with a quick trade. P250 leaning up to the short control alongside Breezy here, looking to possibly push up towards the A play, I think. Well, they already got shut down by the AUGs early on. Swapping out to the SMG, Steve has automatic weapon, but Kenny's been seen. Gets dinged down twice, actually. The fam out here on the boost box. Sees two players burst up, can't get a kill on the first man. Ethan on four points of health, eventually goes down. It's all left to Breezy in a one versus four. Deagle out, 30 seconds to try and get these kills together. Does isolate Amanek, but peeks back into mid where he is eventually traded. No bomb plant for EG. This will be an eco. Yeah, look, they can't really invest too much here, Evil Geniuses. G2 clean up that force by very well. Ooh. Um, Hero Scout? It's a heavy investment, right? Like, there's not a massive amount of loss bonus. They've got to be making sure that they're doing some decent damage or at least getting a bomb plan. Because for me, Stan is buying way too much into round three. Feels <laughs> like it. Shot missed out. Hunter's like, no, I'm going back. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he's, you know, when you, you would think, obviously, like, you know, we, we talked to Carrigan a little bit earlier on, and they said, listen, we know that they don't have a sniper, so let's just push mid and see what we can do. And it's like, well, with Hunter with a similar position, you think one. suddenly realizing, yeah. suddenly realizing, <laughs> actually, hold on, they've got a scout. It's probably not a good idea for me to face. So, yeah. Kill found an Amanek here towards the tunnels. Quick frag on Stannis Law and the uh, shotgun then over positions itself right up at the entrance. So if they do go out to the B player, then there could be some serious cash money for G2. Yeah, we don't see the Nova all too often, but look, if it can make the money, it can make the money, right? It's certainly one of those weapons that really one kill almost pays for itself, so... If Aminet can try and support, get that util in, maybe try and bait the Nova in... Oh, a headshot at long range onto Cirque! That's not a bad start! Very good start! Five on three, gained off the back of the opening kill. Ethan pressing forward with his Deagle play in, trying to catch someone off towards the mid control. Nico is ready for this, though. The M4 on position, sees the feet, gets that kill easy. Nice patience there to just line up the headshot when appropriate. Now, Breezy, the Deagle dealt with by Nico again. Tarek, last man standing out towards long, and Nexa gets his SMG kill in on this one. And G2 with all five players alive. Has conceded two kills so far in the last three rounds. Up to the rifle by, I believe, Hunter may be upgrading his weapon. I mean, AUG instead. Could have played this as a bonus round here for G2, but no matter what, they're still going to have the firepower advantage. As AK is out for EG, however. Yeah, we'll know that that Galil for Stanislaw, obviously, with that uh, heavy investment in the last round, which didn't quite lead to any damage or a bomb plant. So, Evil Geniuses won't be too happy with that investment, but they'll be able to get the rifles forward into round four. Jiggle Peak coming out from Cirque down towards the bottom of mid. 
A little bit of upper tunnels pressure coming in to start off the round. G2 only playing one player out towards a B site. Look at how many players are out from Longhouse. Yeah, four man stack in from G2 initially. EG did not want to go there. They haven't gone for log control very uh, frequently so far here. They pressed up. It's the mid control they have to focus on now. The smoke's going to try siphoning off. Blind spray is in from the firing squad, doing damage to Stannis Law. And Amanet gets overwhelmed by the AK. That might already be a safe call here for G2. Five on four with all CT suppressed. The CT spawn a lurker on towards short. May take some exit frag. You can see how quickly they're getting out of there. One headshot on Nico is found. And for EG, it is their opening round here on the T side. Yeah, nice round. I don't know if that was just a bit of a gut feeling or a read at all from uh, Stanislaw, but look, going in towards a B play when G2 have just set themselves up for a heavy long take is just the perfect uh, perfect call. Might even be able to hunt onto more players. Next up. Ooh, does he win this fight? If so, it could be a chance of picking up the AK. Nice headshot comes through. Nate onto Ethan too. Little bit far away. And AK gets picked up though. So that's, he's trying to find it. There it is. Not bad. When you know you're already saving to get an, a T-side weapon, I'll take that any day. Yeah, not bad at all. Very well placed there. G2. Still losing the round to Evil Geniuses, however, again, they're playing these uh, weapons in to rebuy back and, you know, they had enough cash to reinvest anyway, so they're just going to go ahead and do that. Or for Kenny, perhaps? See it out early for him, and yep, there it is. Four kills so far in this map up, leading the charge alongside Nexa in the frag counts. Three to one, the difference. It's EG trying to get something going here. Need to uh, keep this campaign running. Smokes, a lot of smokes actually here towards the mid position from both sides. Going to siphon off the Xbox positions onto the mid doors as well. EG stacking up the upper tunnels here. Definitely looking like a B player. Early. Oh, good shot to start off from Kenny S, and that might just force them in towards the B side. Two players here. Util coming out for the top. Crossfire set between both Amanek and from Hunter towards that car position. AUG's getting the great lineup. Look at the crossfire set. Finally, a kill goes back from the T side from Cirque, but a great cleanup ensued. And AKs get picked up for a couple of players. What a round from G2. What a cleanup round that was. Great crossfire and great opening pick to start off from Kenny S. Yeah, and that was what I was talking about. You know, this was my big, my big fear coming into this map up is that G2 are just going to swing in with sheer confidence. And that was a confident hold from those two individuals on that B side. Just placed the crossfire, destroying everyone that comes their way. And Evil Genius is, well, back down to a pistol on Ethan. They will force a buyback here with the AKs in tow. The Cirque burning to 50 points of health already here in the, uh, in the long house. Got EG pressed up towards the mid control again towards that short position. Kenny's going to tr just try and uh, catch a face but miss out the contact. No smokes down. We'll see some utility coming his way. Yeah, EG playing quiet because uh, they haven't got much to work with. Yeah, Kenny S hasn't seen any vision out from mid. Nico playing very passive up from ramp two, giving up this short control to the T side to get that short XE in. Late lurk out from long from Breezy could be on the play. And try to draw the attention away from Nexa as well. Well, our top forces Nico away, backed up behind the boxes, flashes overhead, duck down, gonna evade the flashbang. See where Cirque's at, drop in, takes that on plant to add a play. Spray back on a second man, connects a double kill. Ethan so low, close to the boxes, does manage to get some support into a three versus three trade, but every player is tagged up below 50 points of health here on the T side line. The plant can be secured on default. Not going to go for a risky long plan where the uh, or potentially could support from Stan. Step back up towards the goose position as the EG side now set themselves ready for the G2 receiver. AUG in, sees where that AWP is at, fires away, gives up his position. Smoke to buy some cover. Nade on the site, could be able to take Ethan down. It all depends on his positioning. Doesn't land, but Hunter does. Breezy and Stan get two picks back, though. Kenny now left alone here on the replay. Back turn, Deagle up, does get that first headshot, but Breezy trades it for a 3k, coming back in from the mid backstab to keep EG alive in that one. Got real Larry, but he's just about come out on top. Yeah, look, good post plant coming through. Nice hold coming through from Breezy as well, just to peek on his teammate contact. But what it really came down to for G2 was maybe Nico just pushing too far forward. Like, he did a really good job of obviously uh, just waiting for the flashbangs to come out to peek towards the site. He got a couple of kills and then maybe just got too hungry, thought that he could have been on for uh, too much more. 
And as soon as he gets traded, the advantage just gets lost there. Flash out towards the Longhouse, baits out the AWP, but they now know where Kenny S is playing through early rounds. And rather than in the last round, where they didn't take short control at all on the CT side, they're now having a double play between Nexo and Nico. Yeah, crossfire. Very, very short sure to show up. I mean, that's where EG went last time to get that round together. So just counteract that position with two players. No such presence will be shown this round around. Instead, they just dismantle that play, go back to passive positions and support the AWP towards Long. Kenny could be in for a task if EG press up to his position. I think there might be one player already at the uh, blue box corner, but not to be. Three players on Galil's here for EG, so their firepower is limited. When it comes to these entries, they've got to be on point with them. And already Kenny drops the first of the AKs. Peek back in towards short control, perhaps. And does get shut down by Stanislaw. Now Nexa here with two players to find. Turns away, lines them up, but doesn't get any kills. Uh, Nico's in a tough spot because all of his teammates aren't really in rotation. Bomb gets crossed over. Oh, there's a chance to deny the bomb from crossing. No, not quite. Doesn't get that kill onto Stanislaw. But they're going to still try and go for this. Boost going up towards the side. Trying to see if they can just find a little bit of a pixel. They have spotted a player wide out to the open. Back to a 3v3 now. Attack falling on ramp. Khalil on site and Stanislaw going to wait and bait. Hunter's going to continue facing with his M4. Reboost back for the other player and he gets that kill in. Stanislaw to four alongside Ethan. So now left alone. Two players to line up. Gets that first <laughs> kill for Hunter with a quick peek in. A headshot for a 2k. Or oh, recovered. Diffuse coming through. G2, another fantastic retake on their board. Oh, that was juicy. That was really well played. And you can just see the disciplinary factor out from CT. Not over-aggressing, almost waiting for the play to come to them, forcing out the mistakes. A double boost comes through, but it works out both times to get an individual duel. And Tarek is not starting off this second map well. 0-0-7 zero, zero, so far over on the T side. But for G2, another successful retake, and it's going to force the T's on a bit of an eco. Yeah, Deagle's out. Half by in. Incendiary out. Next, they're going to be pushed forward ahead of this smoke. Sees one T-side player. Doesn't quite love the spray against him. Deagle will get the kill instead on Stanislaw. So that's a kill found. Rush out towards short. Meanwhile, Incendiary will do his damage first. Do they do catch a couple of kills, actually? But the AWP of Kenny lines up two on the Galat. And Tarek is the last man standing here. HE to his position. Not doing damage. He has the bomb on his back. And then there's Hunter from CT spawn that will clean up that last frag. Actually, back from the short control, excuse me, so never mind. Backstab set in for a 6 2, no bomb plant. Decent hold there from Evil Geniuses, but it was just up against pistols. And you just have a look at some of the results as of late. We saw that for G2, getting a victory over Astralis in the uh, Blast Premier Global Final, uh, a victory over Big, a couple of ones against Na'Vi and uh, Namega as well in IM Beijing and Dreamhack Masters Winter. Whereas for Evil Geniuses, the most amount of rounds I've ever got uh, in the last three months on this map is eight against Liquid in the Blast Premier Global Finals. Next up, having a bit of an aggressive approach up towards top mid. A lot of early damage coming through onto Tarek, but they just fall right back and now let the short take come through for the T's. EG going for the short take once again. Gone short quite a lot so far here in this uh, half. Smokes down. Molotov, of course, driving players away from the advanced position. No one's on the site itself. Oh, oh, Kenny with that adjustment. Just knows. He knows that Ethan's there. Had an inkling and took him down. Bomb plant can be secured in the short position, but a five versus four. G2 up for the retake. And always they've been at the advantage here on these retakes. Possibly a seven to two scoreline coming up for them. Stanislaw down there at the CT entrance. Nico is not watching, not taking face. Yeah, it's taken a while for G2 to actually get in retaking positions, and Stanislaw is still trying to get quite aggressively towards his CT angle. Late lurk out from Tarek is already incredibly low, and Hunter doesn't even see the play at all. Stanislaw trying to do as much damage in the 4v4. There's Kenny with the wallbang headshot. Tarek coming in with the bat line. Spray through alongside Breezy. Gets it to a 3 versus 2. Man advantage for the T side line. Amanek caught off guard. There's Tarek with the kill. And Breezy follows suit from the CT spawn. So we do find ourselves in with a third for EG. Came with a last second backstab as G2 are pressing forward. But it's a round nonetheless. Yeah, a lot of back and forth rounds now between these two sides. And it's kind of crippling the economy from G2. They're in a position here where they just don't have the money. They're on 1900 loss bonus. They might just have to try an eco. They're not on double eco status. And 
Yeah, good round coming through for Evil Geniuses. And look, that could be the start for their T-side to really start to claw this back. Hardly any investment coming through for G2. A Zeus and a Smoke, and the Smoke's already been used, and it's a B-stack. Yeah, I'm going playing the off-angle uh, off position here on the boost box. It's probably to try and see if he can pick up a... Uh... A kill of a player that makes their way into the B site. EG have gone stack up towards uh, sh uh, tunnels a couple of different times. But it's the short control that's really led to their success. So if they go towards B now... Maybe G2 could be onto something. For now though, it's play into... This position. And on the short control, Stan is still watching for any sort of contact, but no peeks in so far. As long as they don't run into the stack, then it's fine. Um, Evil Geniuses, I mean, the only real way they run into this is if they fake short and end up splitting to B, which does look like it may happen. Yeah, maybe. Smoke saw Molotov's out. Okay, this just got interesting. EG running right into the stack. They take out Amanek to start things off. Zeus out of play. Nico close with his USB, dealt with by Ethan. No taps on the USB, sent to dinks or kills. So fortunately, EG clean house, but for a minute there, you could have looked at that and said, okay, this is where G2 are going to shut down this uh, T-side. If they had upgraded pistols, maybe it could have worked, but... Yeah. It's a round for EG, and they could just rest on that much. Yeah, look, you're always running into a stack, no matter it's a gun round, whether it's an eco or hard buy. It, it can be awkward, but I think EG actually placed themselves really nicely. They had good crosshair placement. They didn't get too over-aggressive. They had good placement between one another in terms of positioning. And for G2, they're going to bank a tactical timeout going into round 11. Already buying down an AWP for Kenny S. Probably realizing we've got a lead. Let's let's keep it that way. Yeah. Seems like it. What are they going to do to try and uh, keep it at this stage? They just play out their standard defensive rounds and just, you know, counter a couple of little intricacies from EG or... They just changed the entire game plan entirely. We'll find out here into round 11. Smokes down towards Cross. Going to leave one player on that B-bomb side this time for G2. That's the fine man himself, Amanek. Kenny into the short control, aggressing. And Nexa knows it. He's going to swing. Is he going to get the kill, though? Tarek ready for this player, but no contact established. Kenny actually backs off a little bit. Yeah, Tarek's got to be careful not to go too far forward here because he's got no support from a teammate, no flash in from lower tunnels, at least not yet. Has been able to grant himself a fair bit of map control, but you almost get the feeling that if he starts to slow walk in, Kenny's going to win that fight. Very, very silent from Evil Geniuses. They're waiting for a mistake. Oh, short away from Tarek. Does manage to isolate Kenny. Shots back and forth here. AK looking for his man. Sees the player upstairs as well. The spray is awkward, but it does come through with that frag in the end. Oh! Tap through from Tarek. Also connects to the second man. So Nico will fall. And there'll be Molotov down to the CT spawn. Hunter sees the players at mid position. Amanet gets the kill on one of Breezy. So three versus three. That bomb is committed towards short, though. EG have to join it. Yeah, Hunter's getting a lot of these footsteps, getting that information. Might just try and jump spot with that MP9. Amanek needs to rotate over, and Hunter's dealt with now. Nexa out towards the long corner. Probably just has to back off and save here. There's no money for G2. There's no real way that they can go in for this retake. And I think it's just an instant save call coming out. Seems to be. One player is pressing up to the CT spawn, actually. So maybe there could be an exit frag on the table for Amanek. Next, they're looking to swap to an AK, I believe. Yep, there was one downstairs in that mid position, but Ethan deals with him quick, so it's all left to Amalek to get an exit frag. And EG, oh, bringing this one back, fifth to the T side board. Trying to keep as competitive as they were over on train, hopefully to win the map outright this time. Baby steps, though, within one of the lead here. Now's the case of equalizing, and with the money being where it is for G2, with the loss bonus not building up all the way, you're probably going to be seeing eco pistols around Amalek. Maybe some upgrades here and there. I doubt they'll have a lot of Kevlar. It's got a save towards those rifle rounds first and foremost. Uh, good recovery, I want to say here for Evil Genius. I know that we're still only very early uh, into this Dust 2 game, but they're, they're starting to bring this back. It seemed like G2 were getting a bit of momentum going for themselves while they were up, what, 6-2. to two. 
three rounds in a row now for EG, and they've completely destroyed the economy. And yes, you've got that AUG in play from Amanek, but that's going to be it. A little bit of upgraded pistols and a bit of utility, but that's all they're going to be able to afford. Evil geniuses. The opportunity to now try and type the scoreline at 6-6. Six to six. Nexa and Kenny. Dressing to that mid position, so knows it. Gets Amanek to find that frag instead. Nico will press forward, grab that AUG. Mid face does not allow a kill to come in. They've done a decent enough damage, a decent amount of damage here. Okay. Let's catch that USP, take a bit of damage. And Kenny has to take a PTV straight to the head. So there's one frag found. There's two rifles that Hunter and Kenny can gain if they swing out to the mid control. Seeing those players coming in from the long position. And Kenny seems like he wants to go for this defense here. This could get real interesting, but I don't know how much he can find. Yeah, look, without the Kevlar, it's going to be tough, right? He's going to have to hit some insane shots. Flash at the ready. T's are already very close towards that round position. They just swing as soon as they see that flash coming in. So, 6-6, six to six, they recover an AK, and then they lose it. So they don't bring anything forward. Round 13. Do they go in for an AWP? Kenny S has got enough money to go for an AWP and body armor, if he so desires. And yeah, there's the call coming out. Full gun round, six all, G2. Winning the your battle towards mid, Zerg. Not expecting that, and the slightest kill comes through, and the T's are extending very quickly in towards the B site. Amanek gets that one frag on Tarek and forces EG to back off. That's a 5v3 game by G2 immediately off the back of the round star. It came off to an aggressive orb pick. Kenny S peeking out from mid onto Cirque and then just sort of leaning in the offensive over towards B. Just runs into Amanex AUG. Evil geniuses are really going to have to try and fight to get this advantage back. Ethan flashed in towards mid, just forcing Kenny S deeper and deeper into CT spawn. EG needs to somehow force an incredible mistake from G2 to try and get the advantages back in their favor. One player at Goose and Hunter could be a bit of a thorn on their side, especially with Breezy being low HP. Kill comes in, Stan with the AWP at close range position on the corner, gets that kill, but Breezy falls in trade. It's going to be Ethan chiming in towards mid position, Kenny S will fall. Amanek takes the trade back, and the AWP Stan overcooks his flick, allows Nexa a kill of his own right. And another lead being taken by D2, defending against the even standing of the evil geniuses. And what do they have to do to overtake this side? Yeah, they, they need to gather momentum, and unfortunately, it seems like for EG, while we're seeing some good rounds from them, we're not seeing enough of a streak to actually get over. Uh, giving away, maybe a bit of an opening pick. Maybe that wasn't quite necessary from Sirk. Maybe feeling that he needs to step up, considering he's only got three kills so far on this T side. A couple of low numbers once again, and ooh, if they run into this long stack, this could get very ugly. Look at Nico trying to get aggressive! Not quite taking Ethan down, jumping to evade those bullets. And that nade onto his position should take him out with a follow-up as well. Oh, disaster for evil geniuses. Five on three and only like eight points of damage done to Nico. Uh, again, there are moments where G2 just look unstoppable and this is one of them here. That was a great start, wasn't it? Aggression comes out from both sides towards Longhouse, and Nico just continues spamming through. Double nades end up coming out. And he even got two players really over to this round position. Kenny S missing out that first AWP shot, but Nico taps up on the side, even finds a follow up. Kenny S gets involved. What an excellent round for G2. Hardly any damage done. And Hunter, I think he like tried to get another weapon, accidentally chucked away his M4. <laughs> Not like him out is they can buy him down. It's round 15. They're going to have to force invest anyway. I mean, unless they actually ends up on a dig or something. No, there's an M4 on the floor. He should be fine, so. Eight rounds for G2. They have won the half. So, uh, hoping for an opening pick back here to try to get something to return. Some sort of way back in for EG. Sprays through from G2 to respond down here towards the mid position and no kills will return. Nothing will be found early. Now fast in towards this short control and we're actually seeing Kenny S playing out towards ramp, normally playing out towards that car or long angle with the AWP to defend up towards the A site. Nico caught in trying to get back towards CT spawn, playing a bit of an off angle. 
Orb in watching. One player drops down. Nico seen them both. Doesn't get either of the kills. That's what Kenny's there for in the trade, though. Damage has been done. Deagle back in. Looks for contact. Ooh. That's a good shot on Breezy. Cirque response though. Ethan comes up with a three versus two. Nexa spraying up against that AWP. And flank is inbound from the T side line. And Tarek will take Nexa down. So all left to Hunter. Seeming like EG may gain themselves a seventh here. So again, keep this at close at the half, but all about converting the map up as Hunter hunts for an exit frag. We'll get the player back towards the uh, tunnels. Can't even play with an incendiary. He's got to go for this, obviously, but his chances are virtually nil here. Incendiary up, and Cirque takes him down. 8-7, G2, take the half. We go to a break. Evil geniuses are clinging on for dear life in this second map. 8-7, still favoring G2. They still have a chance going into their CT side. There needs to be some serious turn-ups here from this squad. However, they need to make this pistol work for my money here, Dweg. Utility in on Amanek, Nexa, and Hunter. And a very early play into the tunnels for G2. Now, Lurk Smoke comes out, a little bit of early contact comes through from Ethan to get some information with the volley out towards backplay position. He's going to spread to his position, will force him out to the open, but great flashbangs come through from the CT side. It gets opened up in a four versus four, but Hunter in the tunnels is still fragging away. Yeah, bomb plant can be secured, retake mode for EG, suck. His eyes on that big box at the platform position. Nico is behind it, but can't catch vision as of right now. Leaning in, checking the site, checking the back line, checking the corner. Needs to catch one player at the car position. Next to scene. Cirque lands his headshot in the end. Turn back against Breezy. Cirque goes forward. Stands forward. One versus one. Needs this tap. But he doesn't win it against Kenny S. As G2 find their ninth.
Oh, what a way to start off that T-side pistol. Just some really even trades, right? We see the Lurksmoke comes out from B. They deal with Ethan incredibly well with that molly. Try and force him out to the open. We see the Hunters playing in the upper tunnels to cut off rotations. 3v3. And from there, they're just all peeking on each other's contact. And it's Kenny S to win a beautiful one versus one. And forced by back out for Evil Geniuses. Tarek picking up a scout. Cirque doing the same. And they've got to convert this, surely. They don't win this force buy, and G2 are just on victory road from here. Pressing forward here for the CT, line four versus three situation. Taps up Amanek, will be able to take Stanislaw down for now two players left. The plant should be able to get secured from here. EG have just, well, been ripped apart once again. The MAC-10 starting things off, putting the likes of Breezy into the negative. He was the only player that was positive for EG at the start of this round. And on well, one kill, we'll come back for Cirque at least, but it's not going to mean much here. Uh, not really, and even Amanek can go hunting. I mean, for EG, like, it's still important that they hold on to both of these weapons, right? Although it was a force buy, they're not winning the round. At least bring what, what you can forward into the next. And Kenny S going back over to pick up that AK. But it's this player in T-spawn from Amanek that could be the one to at least find one more kill. There it is. Now they're even going hunting onto Cirque. They'll have nothing to worry with if he goes down. He's going to start peeking in as well. Oh, this is a bad idea. A really bad idea. Being hunted from long position as well. He thinks he's safe. He thinks wrong. Nico closing down the round. And G2 begin the slow march into double digits. Up to victory row. Matt Tenzin on the force by. Oh, technically a half by. I guess a full by against EG. Who just got the eco. Deagle in for Tarek. Again, going for a slightly heavier investment than his teammates. And G2 just looking to pump up the money here. Like, you know, they're just going to do so well with these Mac 10s in. You can see how aggressive Hunter wants to get as a result of it. Flashbang does keep him blind. Deagle in for Tarek. Going to get dealt with. And Mac 10 is involved to get one and two kills. He even does trade back one frag. And Sir gets Hunter caught off towards the Xbox position. But only one more kill, actually. They're taking all the rifles away. So that's not even a bad eco from EG. <laughs> That is incredible to think the limited weaponry they had that they've gotten away with this many kills won't quite be any more, or at least you don't expect so. Cirque's already found two in a row on 3 HP, though. Trying to tap up from CT. It's going to be a near impossible duel onto Amanek, so give himself a little bit of a different angle. Maybe go back out towards the t spawn The bomb's already crossed out to the B side. So for G2, while it will be an 11th round for them, it, it it's an expensive one. Like, there was a lot of SMGs, right? But still, that's, that's pretty expensive. Yeah, not all the kills came in on the SMGs. Can they get the uh, a Galil? I don't think they can, no. So, just that AK staying in play. It can be upgraded, but even then, you know, again, very expensive. And most of those weapons were bought in the last round, so... Amanek will keep his for value. Lucky and head Kevlar across four individuals of the Evil Geniuses side. So that will still be an effective weapon to use. M4s in, AUGs out, the AWP on Cirque. Be a concern as the AKs set themselves in for the G2 side. Fast play into the upper tunnels for Hunter and Co. Nico setting in a bit of utility. They're going to go rush it out and try to see if they can enter to the side. I mean, the bomb's on his way here, so that seems to be the call. Yeah, they've still got a lurk from Nexa, maybe trying to pull some attention away from them. Oh, great utility, though, coming out from EG. That's going to slow it down. Look at how much damage is coming in. The T's are going to press forward, but they haven't checked Stanislaw's position. The M4 should be able to line them up, gets two kills, on for a 3k. Finally, the trade comes back, but for G2, that's not good enough. You've got to be checking your angles. Stanislaw should have been traded there instantly, and instead, it's Evil Geniuses to put a massive hold in the defense over at the B side. Yeah, no one checked it. Really, he shouldn't even have been traded. He should have just been shut down immediately with an opening frag. 
And the bomb in his position where he went down in the end, leaving Kenny way back at T-Spawn, retreating away from the tunnels. He's got to save the NWP. There's no chance. And now, maybe that damage against G2 might come back to hurt them here. There was potential in the MAC-10 to farm up some serious cash against the headshots of the lacking Kevlar players, lacking in helmet players for EG. You think that's now a pipe dream for them, obviously, with that MAC-10 being uh, on the floor in the B site. This will be eight for the CT side, an all-important eight to keep things running. They're now three away from G2. But the issue that they had on train frequently was can you convert a, a, a follow-up? You know, they got those one rounds, and yeah. then there was a strike back, a quick XC from G2 that caught Evil Geniuses off guard. And then from there, it was, you know, a, a, a good sort of, like, you know, reset round. The economy was not back a peg in terms of loss bonus, and that ended up being G2 holding contest. So for this round, it will be a save call, but something to be wary of going forward into round 20, because there should be a buyback from T's. Yeah, it's not going to look that great, though, is it? I mean, Amadek can buy an AK for himself. He can drop one over to a teammate, probably to Nexa. Maybe have Nico on a Galil. I mean, in saying that, maybe Nico drops a Galil to Nexa and gets an AK in return. Hunter could buy an AK himself, but there's going to be at least one player with a limitation. And for Evil Geniuses, I, I think you're right there. Uh, being able to just find a, some, a consistent form of rounds. Rifle's coming forward. A Deagle's actually come out from Nexa, so no Galil at all. Not so ever. Kenny up in. Oh, just the edge of the smoke. Does not see that player there on the CT side. Ethan getting away lucky with his position. The smoke's down. A stand watches for contacts. Kenny. Short control establishing the defaults here for G2. It's very passive defaults at the moment here. No real uh, forward face against the EG side. Kenny has already taken a little bit of damage though. No, a lot of sound cues coming through. It looked like they wanted to try and set themselves up for a run boost towards that short control, but they're not needing to use too much of this utility to find it. The NWP from Cirque posted up onto the CT cutoff corner. And just going to be a short XE coming through for G2 to try and get the post blood in. Got that AWP on Cirque. Watching here from the long cross, two players drop down to CT spawn. Tarek is in the midst of that smoke, he's not ready for them. Still takes that spray, takes that first player down, all pressure. T players making their way in, it's actually breezy, fires through that smoke and manages to find Hunter as well. So, five on three gained, EG will concede the bomb plant here, but the retake is on for them. Kenny gonna be chief among the rifles. Nico with the other one, the AK set in, spray through, they take down that Deagle player and actually tap through to the other two as well. Ethan and Breezy with those final couple of frags and that'll be nine for the EG side. Probably one of the best rounds we've seen from either team in this entire map, I want to say. That was absolutely fantastically played from EG. Great retake. They dropped down in towards CT spawn from G2 to try and force back the AWPA, but then Tarek's in a great position to be able to deal with a bit of a crossfire. The retake comes in really smoothly. They've already got a couple of advantages. They're kind of forcing G2 into some real big off angles out from sort of the elbow short control. And then Kenny S has been seen as well. Nice taps coming through from Breezy. Evil Genius is now starting to really close the gap. And for G2, there's just no money. So they're going to have to eco going into round 21. Oh, suck straight in on Nico. Takes him down. Kicks things off on the right foot. G2. Into the tunnels. Losing that first player, obviously, on this eco round. Seeing if these Deagles can do damage. And damage is the best thing they're going to hope for. EG with a double AWP setup already making it work for that first frag. And now the confidence can start to return to this side. Now the team that we hope to see take a fight against G2 can start to enter the server. But in the second rifle round now against the Eco will be within one of G2's lead. The next step will be equalizing and turning the advantage. Another thing that EG are going to have in the back of their mind is really trying to pull this economy in their favor, right? Like, they're in a position now where they've got a decent amount of money in the reserve, but if they can win at least this anti-eco very successfully and, and not drop many players at all, then it could look even healthier going forward. And Tarek on the site. Crossfire set between Cirque. Another short play comes through. Kenny does find that first pick, so a good start from the T side, but they need to try and get this bomb plant or try and find another pick. Look how low Tarek is now. Doesn't matter, Breeze has got his back, playing the offsite anchor. 
gets tagged low of his own, right? So it could be some exit frags for Nexa, but Flashbang is going turn away. And Tarek eventually gets that 2k. So, Evil Genius is dealing with the eco round. Could have been a lot more expensive for them if they weren't careful, but they managed to maintain control, so that's fine. Tarek can buy back. Passing Norp off towards Suck. And Rifle should be in VG2 as well. Again, will be a pretty low buy. Might struggle on some utility basis. Yeah, Amulet taking a decoy instead of a full set. And G2 taking a tactical here. Their second one of the game. A decent long spawn for Kenny S. It's not the most perfect one, but it, it can allow an AWP pick if they want to try and move that way. Maybe try and initiate out some longhouse control. One thing we haven't seen from either team on T side is really just bomb rushing out from longhouse just to get that early control. We've seen it very limited from both teams. Evil geniuses, though, they're, they're hanging in there. And it is very similar to Train, right, that they are hanging in there. Um, we didn't really ever get to see them have a lead. If it was, it was only for one round before being equalized. They're in a position where they are still on the back foot, but it's looking like it's starting to move momentum in their favor. Well, Kenny opting not to go with the AWP and the Kevlar. He had enough for only a piece of Kevlar without the, the helmet. So he's not going to go in with the AWP for this round. Instead of the AK with the double flash and smoke set up. There's double ops staying in for EG because they were safe from the last round, so it makes sense. One of them's boosted up. Peter oh. Short suck! Why? Timing. I hate it when that happens. I hate it when that <laughs> happens. And we've seen it quite a lot this week. Yeah, look, that's unfortunate, right? Unscopes, and then they peek, and it's like, ah, ah, oh, well, I've just lost my chance. But look, anyway, it doesn't really have too much of a disadvantage because he doesn't get picked off for it. And the AUG from Tarek trying to get a bit of vision in from mid is going to be forced back with that utility towards the B site. And G2 are hoping not to run into that AWP. We should see a flash off the angle. Nicely predicted. Nice and easy left, G2. Still no kills found by them or EG into the second minute of the round. Bomb's making his way out through the tunnel's entrance. Two players in mid may end up going for a split play into the B site. No one's there to really cover them off. If they can smoke down that CT spawn, then there's no way that Cirk can fire against them. The Orpa Stannis will be the next main concern. Seeing those players out, Flash is over. We'll try and keep them blind and suppressed. Still, they make their way into the midst of the smoke, and the Orp gets overwhelmed with the rifles. They're all running past Tarek, though. The AUG with so much to find. He's backed up. He's seen the bomb, seen the booster. Turns up for that first frag. Breezy comes in to support the three versus three. Player out mid. Dealt with by the AUG. Amanek holds the trades though and keeps it all in line. 2v2 for the retake. 15 seconds though. Bomb's not picked up. Amanek spotted. Suck takes him down. Kenny with a long flank on two points of health. And the CTs have locked out the site. Still the kill comes in on Suck. Gonna try to find Ethan. Four seconds and he's staying behind hardcover. So is Kenny to keep his life and keep his rifle. And evil geniuses. They have brought this one back. 11 all with some very last second kills. Yeah, I don't want to be too negative, but I think that was very poorly played coming out for G2. You know, two versus two. They just needed to get the bomb down, but instead they kind of fluff around by having a backstab play and then hoping the hunter on the side's going to be able to get the bomb planted. It just had too many complexions with the time that low, knowing the situation they're in, just play the 2v2 and get the bomb down. But instead, that's just not even a possibility. Tied up scoreline, fast out for the longhouse from Kenny S with an AK. Another molly in towards Bluebeam. That should spread onto his position, force him into the open. Great start from EG again. They are really finding some form now. Yeah, five on four situation. G2 on the half by around. Shouldn't expect too much out of them in this one. They might go fast in towards the A site. They've got that short presence already on those four individuals. And Cirque. Trying to shoulder bait and see something back here. Well, here they come. Run boost. Oh, oh that flick is beautiful. They do get a trade back though. Mika with his deagle taking two heads actually. Can see a bomb plant from here. That would already be a positive pickup there for the G2 side. Tapping it once, forcing Breezy out, but doesn't land the headshot on his third man. Good effort there. I personally would have gone for the bomb plant, but Nico having faith in his uh, crosshair placement to get the uh, kill and limit the G2 by, but not to be. Half by over. Third tactical coming in for G2 as EG take the lead. They've got rifles out for this next round, and again, they can try shut down the momentum of the, the, momentum of the North Americans.
Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with you there. I think that, again, sticking that bomb plant, just getting the extra money is, is so much more beneficial. Yeah, if you find another kill onto Breezy, then it does open up the opportunity of maybe converting the rounds. But I think long-term, G2 really needs to get more involved, and it's got to come down to getting a stronger economy. And Nexus had a tough time over on this map so far. Five kills and just 15 deaths. And when you think that, in contrast, the Teraku was, what, 0, 0, and 7 at one point when they were going into round 8. He's turned things around for himself. And a lead now for Evil Geniuses. This streak is looking on point. Five rounds in a row now for the North Americans. Back in the game, it seems. Molotov into this match with the Orp boost. Breeze is going to push forward a bit. Still going to kill on Hunter. That's big. Nico transferred his phrase back and gets the two. Huge plays to respond to the double up of Breezy's own right. And Tarek, as this smoke clears, does not see Nexa. They gain short control. And there's no one directly on the A site. Tarek has got to go back here to CT spawn because he's going to be needed for this execute. Uh, that was a really nice trade coming through from Nico. And look, as soon as he slow walks out towards this A site, he's going to get the info. They can bring that bomb over. It depends on how far he wants to actually commit because they've left Amanek as a late lurk in the upper tunnels. Stanislaw is not over-rotating from B. Oh, timing on this peak. Who's going to see each other first? Ooh. Who's going to get shot off first as well? Hamanek will start pressing in, put smoke down to buy some cover. Stanislaw, no idea about this. And still, EG hold their positions. Oh, this is boost up. He does now. He goes down for it. That's B-site open. And now a player being seen going to try to lock them out of the short control. Tarek adjusting. Amanek going to peek into the window. Tarek has absolutely no <laughs> idea. He's gone. <laughs> Ethan still on the short position. Though. Taps, taps on towards the players, but can't land the kills. And Amanek played that to a T. Had no reason to peek into B, but since he got those kills anyway, he wins the round for G2. That's such a big moment. That's probably one of the best Lurk plays we've seen from G2. So he just puts a Lurk smoke down from B, works the angle, and actually just gets the, the information from a pixel, just the high advantage he has on towards that player, Stanislaw from back plat. And he even sees the player crossing out from mid, from CT, from there taking another fight. And just try to draw a distraction right to allow the A players to go in, and then eventually they take that fight onto Ethan. Another tied up scoreline, a very important round for G2. That's going to help their confidence. Once again, the early short plays coming through on the defaults. This is going to be an early execution as well. I mean, the flashbang from the CT side will try and stop it. Counter incendiaries down, but a player's already dropped a CT spawn. Hunter going to buy some breathing room for his teammates. Players coming out mid to beat. Ethan has no idea there's a player close to him already. Next are coming in from window. Turns up, takes that one frag. And he's back up from his teammate in the M4 of Stanislaw. Half a bid box. Watching at the edge of the smoke. Hunter still sat here in CT as Cirque goes down on the long control. Four on four situation. And things go quiet. G2 looking to pull a fast one. No, Hunter's trying to see if he can cut this rotate off from Tarek. All just comes down to a matter of time. There's a lot of players over at this B bomb site for the CTs. You've got one in the upper tunnels, two on the site itself. It's so silent. It's so, so slow. Ethan's getting a little bit antsy. He's trying to push forward. He sees that one player, but it's a bait. What a big frag to come in from Nico. A really important kill. And that now might force Tarek forward. But Hunter's attention is pulled away to the right-hand side. He looks back over. And now it's back to a 2v2. I have no idea. Stanislaw still waiting towards the site. You can deny Nico. No info. No info. Stanislaw doesn't check it at the right moment, but does get the kill in the end. Heart-stopping moment there for EG, but they do keep the round. Breezy with three kills in particular. Out from that mid-control, re-grabbing the orb of the EG side and taking a third team to reclaim the lead for the CTs. AK's recovered and all G2 got that bomb plant in. And of course, their economy state is fantastic. They can re back into round 26. And you can, again, just feel the struggle of the EG side. Just by an inch a thread, by like the tiniest amount, you can feel like these rounds can swing against their favor. And when they're fighting for survival, like they need something a bit more confident for me. Uh, I don't know. Like when you think about the streak that they're getting, right? Like they're building up a lot of momentum. Yes, there was a round back from G2. Yeah, the rounds are getting incredibly close, but you've got to think that their their confidence has got to be at all time high. They've really brought back this scoreline after losing Pistol going to the second half. It's difficult to regain momentum. G2, 
now down a map or down at least a round already a map up in the series but you do make a good point at least with them being down a map they are fighting for survival oh they're pushing up the tunnels this could be the big play they see nothing they back off instead no reason to go there no reason to stick around G2 so passive on this default. We've seen so many times they've gone straight up through mid, straight into the short control, straight up through tunnels, but this time it's just about taking the uh, long house at the 60 second marker. The CT is also backing away from long, so this is going to be free map control for G2. They, however, prioritize the short control. Take Nico down, take a big name out of server, and now focus on the A play here. Hunter, his AK presses forward as Amanek presses in. Smokes down into the E up to CTC. One kill found on Cirque. Four versus three. Kills and trades found by the CT side. But Kenny S keeps it at evens. Hunter still pressing up here. The kill up kill comes back on a secondary frag. So the bomb plant, it can be received here. Now, Ethan and Stanislaw have got to make a tough decision. Do they go for this or not? Money's just not really here for the CT side. They've seen Nexa, but so has Nexa on towards Ethan. Stanislaw now at a one versus three to try and bring the round together. Kenny S, what a hold that is out from long. He gets two picks trying to cut off the rotations and then even that third one to hold down the post plant. And there's just no money here. No money here for evil geniuses whatsoever. And maybe that's kind of what you're talking about, Jay, of having some more convincing rounds because now they're in an awkward situation like this. Yeah, tactical called in by EG. Surprisingly enough, their first tactical of this game. You wouldn't expect it, would you? We're still up. <laughs> No, I mean, even again, I, I feel like they've struggled so severely over the course of this entire match that, you know, I, I'm feeling like there may have been a few more being taken at this stage. But, I mean, I mean, credit to where it's due, you know, like you mentioned, obviously, the fact that they've got a lot of momentum, they've got like, a bit of a streak here. But that streak just got shut down, obviously, by the G2 side. But listen, EG with a small adjustment to make here and maybe to try and claim this, uh, claim this map up right back. In this round, it's a force buy, though. That puts a lot of chips on the table. If they lose this, we could see G2 at match point. Yeah, it's, um, it's just the way the economy is with these back and forth rounds. The loss bonus just not being there. And G2 are going to realize the implications of being able to get a victory. Evil geniuses are putting everything into this. Now, we saw them aggress in towards the upper tunnels in the last round. They're going to try it again. Are they ready for Amanek? Flash over the top. Oh, oh no, I'm taking the right hand side. You're kidding. Amanek gets a couple of kills. Evil geniuses, they don't check the one angle. And now it's a five on three advantage. They went for the tunnels face in the last round. In this one, it's so much more important. They win out the fight. Amanek on 2 HP, but with 2 kills to his name. Oh boy. And G2 can play out the rest of this round to their own pace here. Like, maybe if they run the clock low, EG can take it back, but you can see the peaking from Stanislaw towards mid. He goes down to the orb. Scout in the surf, fighting out to the mid control. Player out from short. They're probably going to get caught off guard as well. 1v5 for Breezy. As amazing a game he's had so far, I think it might be a bit too much for him. Does land two good shots. That second kill was very partic was particularly good, but again, just too many players to find. And look, maybe that's a bit of payback, right, to when they didn't check Stanislaw's position when they went for the B-Site Exe. It goes both ways. EG, don't check it, man. Look at the performance now coming up for Kenny S. He has slowly been upping his kill count round by round. He's now reached 30, J. A couple of great deagle shots coming in from Breezy, but uh, yeah, only kills, not rounds. 14 to 13, G2, two rounds away from winning the series and going further in the lower bracket. Pistols pushing up, Hunter with the UMP. Around this corner, catch off several. Easy. Easiest thing in the world for him. Four kills. Ace, Antico Ace. And why not at this stage? Give him the money. Give him the cash. No, Amanek shuts it down. Not like it matters. 15 to 13. Map and match point and elimination point for G2, EG, and Dire Straits. They need something right now.
And they need a miracle because they've got no AWP for Cirque, they've got no kits, and they're very, very light on the utility, Jay. What's that one incendiary for the entire squad? A G2. Oh, they've even got Kenny S for a fast long peak. This could be a great chance to find the opening man advantage, but they're bringing a lot of players here towards the CT side at long. Now, against that more power forced out, Flashbang keeps him blind and forces him back into the house. Amanek right at the edge of the smoke here, hoping to face forward. Flashbangs will be coming through. Second flash in Stanislaw does see Amanek, does take him down. Evil geniuses starting off good in this round. An all important must win round of that. Downstairs into the mid control. Kenny S will fall next out from Breezy. Up from the backstab, back in from the house. AUG's break catches one player in the midst of the doors. The wall bang from Nexa will turn to the kill itself. He's low HP and Breeze looks to capitalize. Takes out Hunter instead. Knows that Nexa is low somewhere in the mid position. Going to be challenged directly by the AK-47. Oh. But Breezy wins out the fight. All left to Nico. Big 3k from him. And if there was a player to bail out EG, it would be him. 29 kills behind Kenny by a single fragging server. And now Nico left to lick his wounds and probably save the AK. Look, just great utility usage to start off out from Longhouse. And we just see a great backstab coming through from Breezy. They put so much emphasis out towards the upper tunnels and, and so much distractions pulled away after G2 find, uh, lose that first man advantage that allows Breezy just to slow walk in, get behind them, and just find so many kills. Nico, 1v4. I mean, he's not going to win the round, but at least if he can do some more damage, you can kind of limit what the CTs are going to have behind them. Make sure that they don't pick up any of those AKs, if possible. Thirteen seconds for Nico. Oh, he's gonna get hit. No, Breezy takes him down. Oh, he gets taken down, I should say. So at least he stays alive after time. You know, a bit too overzealous there for Breezy's own right, but still, he was the guy that. Uh, Bailed EG out in that last round, and now looking towards round 30. May become pivotal. May become important to be able to take us to OT. EG stumbled at the last hurdle in the last map. One smoke made a difference. And now the CTs press forward onto Dawn with one more round to make happen to try and take us to overtime in Dust2 to stay alive in this bracket, in this series, in the group stage. Amanek straight out. Look at how aggressive he gets! Oh, oh Amanek! That's a huge play! Shutting down two players in the left control. Snuck past everybody. Next to get teeth in next. Breezy and Stanislaw siphoned off. Standing man, the only player on the B-side control. And if he goes down, it's as good as done. He'll peak, he'll fall. GG, G2 are moving on. Oh, you're kidding. You're kidding. It's a play like that for Amanek to do it. G2 to get the 2-0 over Evil Geniuses to eliminate the North American team out of IM Katowice 2021. A massive performance coming in from them. And for Evil Geniuses, it is going to be two 14-16 losses as G2 get the 2-0. Unbelievable from them. 16-14s twice in this series, and as we head to a break, we get to break it down.